In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the vector file that we created in a previous session and create the toolpath for the Gothic Cotrefoil panel that you can see on the screen. We will be showing how to use simple toolpaths such as profiling, pocketing, and V carving to create this ornate panel. We're going to start by closing down this finished file and opening up the vector file that was created in a previous tutorial. So first we're going to do file close and then we're going to open up an existing file and in this case it's going to be the gothic quadfall vector drawing.crv file. So we're going to open that up now and we'll be presented with a series of vectors that were created in that tutorial to represent the outlines for the quadfall panel. Now let's go up to our layers and check what we have and we can see that we have four layers, uh, outline shape, top and bottom grooves, foils and V carved shapes. So if we switch those off and take a closer look, we can see that we have the outline shape, then we have the top and bottom grooves, and then we have the foils and the V carved shapes to finish off with. So the first we're going to be dealing with are the foils. So I'm going to switch off all the other layers, switch on the foils, make that level active, and then we can come across and come out of the drawing menu and flip across into the toolpathing menu. So I'm going to switch that across now. We can see we're presented with the uh, toolpathing icons on the right-hand side. And the first thing we're going to need to deal with is the material setup. So from this, I'm going to uh, take a look now. Our thickness is set at one inch for this panel. Our XY datum is currently set in the center, which would have been very useful when working um, with creating the vectors. But for means of toolpathing, I would rather have that in the lower left hand corner. Our Z0 will be from the material surface and our rapid and Z heights. We just need to double check those and make sure that it's fine for the machine and the material we're using. So I'm OK with that. So at this point now, I can start to look at creating a toolpath. Well, our first toolpath is to create a pocketing routine between the inner and outer vector of each of the three cotrefoils. So I'm just going to shift and pick all those items. I'm using the left mouse key and shift on the keyboard. And I'm just going to pick those six now. And then I can come across to my menu and select the pocket toolpath. Now, the first thing we need to set up are our cutting depths. Now, we're going to be starting from the top of the block, so that is set at zero, and we're going to be going down by a cut depth of an eighth of an inch, 0.125. Moving down, we need to select our tool. So, from the tool database, I'm going to pick up the quarter inch end mill as the tool for this routine, and we could come down and set either an offset or a raster routine. In this case, offset would be ideal given the uh, slightly unusual shape we have here, and we're going to come down now and just set the name so we're going to call this pocket circles and we're just going to calculate that now and we can see that we've sort of moved into the 3d view and we can see that toolpath displayed on the screen now I can come straight up to the menu here we've already entered the sort of preview toolpath menu and just press play on that and we'll see the result of that toolpath. So I'm just going to rotate that and we can see that we've pocketed down in between these vectors to create this sort of recessed uh, area that we will then add in some further detail later in the demo. Okay, so we're gonna move forward now and look at the next toolpath, but uh, for ease of, of understanding what we're doing, I think it's best for us to use a horizontally tiled uh, view uh, where we can see both in the 2D view and in the 3D view, okay? So now we're gonna move across and look at profiling the outer circles. Okay, if we're going to be pocketing the inside of the outer quatrefoil vectors, then I don't need to have the inner one selected too. So I'm just going to use the shift on the keyboard and my left mouse key to deselect those inner vectors, which are just leaving our three outer ones. We're going to come across and close out of the preview menu and up to the profile toolpath. And we need to initially specify our cut depths. Now, bearing in mind we've already pocketed down by an eighth of an inch, my start depth is no longer zero, it's an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to specify that. And then I'm going to cut down a further 0.125 from that position. The tool we're going to be using is our quarter inch ML, which is already selected. And then we need to just decide whether we're going to be machining inside, outside, or on our vectors. In this case, we'll be machining inside our vectors okay and then we can come straight back down and set a name so in this case i'm just going to call this profile outer circles okay and once that's set i can then calculate that 
and we can see the dotted line in our 2D view representing there and also in our 3D view and I can come up now and toggle that showing the solid view so we can see exactly where that vector uh, where the toolpath is on the inside of the dotted vector that we initially selected for the toolpath so I'm happy that that is correct I can then come down to my 3d view and just press play and we can see that that's been cut away now to leave this sort of groove on the inside of the outer vector of the quadrifold now the next toolpath to consider is using the half inch ball nose to create a nice scalloped recess around the inside of the four trifoils and also around the inside of the three quadrifoils. Now before we move forward and start creating the toolpaths we need to appreciate what's happened in 3D to decide really what our start and cut depths are going to be. Now in the case of the four quadrifoils we can see that no material has been removed therefore our start depth will be at zero and our cut depth will actually in this case be quarter of an inch. Now if we take the quadrifoils where we've already removed some of the material from the initial pocketing routine we can see that we don't necessarily want to have the same cut depth because we've already gone down by 0.125 of an inch but naturally I may also wish to correct my start depth but if we actually zoom in and take a closer look we can see that because we're using quite a large tool that will be coming on the inside of this vector here okay then we will actually be cutting or actually plunging down through a little bit of this material that is left from the you know the central area that we will pocket out at a later point so my cut depth needs to be set lower but my start depth should remain at zero just to make sure the tool gradually plunges through this material before taking its pass okay so in this case I can't create it as uh, one single tool path for both the trifoils and the quadrifoils because essentially our cut depths are different okay so with this I'm going to start by doing the trifoils first so we're going to select the vectors that we want to cut so the inner vector will be used actually for the profile cut towards the end so we're going to be using the outer ones now so I'm going to shift and pick those four to pick them up and then just close out of the preview and come up now to the profile toolpath and in this case the start depth will be zero our cut depth will be quarter of an inch 0.25 of an inch our tool is not going to be the quarter inch end mill but we're actually going to be using a half inch ball nose okay so i'm going to select that from the menu now and i now need to come down and decide whether i'm going to be machining inside outside or on in this case i will be machining inside okay so that is already specified and I just need to come down and specify the name. In this case, it will be Profile Trifoils. And we can go ahead and calculate. So we can see that in both the 2D view and the 3D view. You can see in the 2D that we are inside. So we're actually cutting across the profile vector that we're going to be used to cutting this out with. And if we now simulate in the 3D, we're going to have a nice sort of scallop look, which we can see there. So that's a nice, impressive scallop view that we are actually going to cut a lot of this away with the profile cut um, at a later stage. So the next thing we need to do is to come across and consider. OK, so we have one remaining profile toolpath before we uh, begin to look at some V carving. And the profile toolpath that we're going to create is using the half inch ball nose to create a nice scalloped line across our top and bottom grooves. So with that, I'm going to maximize the 2D view OK, and just get it full screen, come up to my layer menu, switch off the foils, switch on the top and bottom grooves and make that the active layer. So I'm clicking into my 2D view now and what I need to create is essentially some sort of center line wireframe or a line down through the middle of our top and bottom groove. So I'm going to pop into the drawing menu now and select the line option and just come down and select the midpoint of the left hand edge of the top groove. OK, so my left mouse click and then I'm just going to scan across and do the same on the right hand side. I'm going to just hit the space bar now, which will temporarily take me out of the command, but not lower the form. I can come back down to my lower left hand edge and click with my left mouse key for the first point and then come across and click on the right hand edge for the far point. So I'm going to hit the right mouse key now and that will take me out of the command. And we can see that we have our two lines created on the screen. Now, 
we need to bear in mind that when we actually machine these the ball the ball nose will not actually violate the very end so it won't actually machine to the end it will come up as close to without violating and popping off the end so we will be left actually with a radius in the corner of all our four profiles okay so what I'd like to do is actually to continue past here so then when we profile at a later stage we've got a nice clean cut so what do I need to do in order to ensure that well the best thing to do is to slightly extend the lines and the easiest way to do that is to shift and pick the other line so I've got both selected and then I'm just going to click again to go into the transform mode and all I'm going to do is simply you can see on the right hand side there and on the left hand side the sort of grab uh, circle and I'm just going to take that now and move it to the right and you can see that that's stretching that out and I'm going to come across to the other side and just stretch that out as well so you can see there that we've just slightly extended those two lines so we can ensure the ball nose is traveling past the edge therefore once again when we trim this off with the profile cut we get a lovely clean cut rather than leaving sort of uh, uh, radiuses in the corner so with those two lines highlighted I can come across now and begin to create the toolpath so I'm going to come up to the profile toolpath and in this case we're going to be using a start depth of zero since we're cutting through fresh material our cut depth would actually be a quarter of an inch we'll be using our half inch ball nose which is correct our machining vectors we're not going to be machining inside or outside but actually on and then we can just come down and say profile and this is going to be top and bottom grooves and we'll calculate that now and we can see those tool tool parts let's show this in a horizontally tiled view so we can see that tool going past the ends in the 2d view and now if i play that we're going to see these sort of lovely scallop view in the 3d so i'm happy that we've created those long enough for when we trim that off and now we can look to create some v carving okay so let's come up to our layers menu now and switch off our top and bottom grooves and we're going to switch on our v carve shapes okay so we can see there there are a number of shapes some of which fall within the quadrifold region and then obviously some of them on the flat area outside and as a consequence although these are going to be machined using the same tool and the same toolpath we'll need to create them as two different toolpaths bearing in mind the start depth for the sort of inner ones shown here will be um, slightly lower than obviously the outer ones as these are being machined into fresh material so with this let's go ahead now and consider machining the outer ones first so i'm just going to simply come across and box pick those items there on the top and bottom and also the ones in the middle so we've selected the outer ones now i'm going to come across and close my preview and come up to the v carving and we need to initially specify the tool we're going to use so in this case i will be using a 90 degree one and a quarter inch v bit so i'll select that from the tool database okay i've got my vectors already selected i don't need to specify a flat depth so i'm going to allow the geometry of the tool to find its natural depth but i am specifying the start depth as zero so we're going to come down and i'm just going to call this v carve um, outer and we're going to calculate that now and we can see the toolpath created there and i'm just going to play that now and we can see that's created a beautiful shape around the outside of our quadrifoils in between our trifoils now we need to consider the uh, v carving that's actually going to be sitting on the pocket that we originally created as the first toolpath so i'm now going to pick those items so once i'm just going to sort of box pick those ones there and then shift and just pick the other four and then the other four on the right hand side too so we now selected those i'm going to come back up to the um, pro the v carving toolpath now our start depth is not going to be zero in this case it really needs to be lower because we've already machined down so this will be 0.125 okay we're going to be using the same tool okay so i'm happy with that and in this case i'm just going to call this a v carve inner and i'm just going to calculate that now and we can see those toolpaths created on these sort of inner pockets and i'm just going to play that 
and we can see that we've nicely created the V carving on the inside pocket region on our quatrefoils. Okay, so I'm happy with all the V carving. Now the finishing touch here will really be to create the profile pass where we need to trim out the whole item from the block itself, but also the center pieces, which happen to be on the inside of our four uh, trifoils and the inside of our three quatrefoils. So the first step to creating the toolpath is to come up and obviously switch on the correct vectors. So from our drop down menu, I'm actually going to switch off the V carve shapes and we need to switch on the foils and the outline shape and we'll make the outline shape the active layer. So now I need to decide which vectors I'm going to use for the profile pass. So I'm going to select the outer vector here and then the inner vectors of our three quadrifoils and four trifoils. OK, so with that, I'm going to select those items on the screen. And of course, if we take a look at what we want to actually do here, we want to machine on the outside of the external profile vector, the rectangular one, but actually machine on the inside of the vectors on the inside of our trifoils and quadrifoils. Now the nature of the profile toolpath knows that actually when I have a sort of nested routine here to machine on the outside of the outside one if I select outside obviously within the toolpath and it will know to do the inside of the ones nested inside. So what I'm going to do now is close out of the preview come up to the profile toolpath and we need to initially specify the cut depth. OK, our stop depth will be zero in this case as we're cutting through fresh material and our cut depth will be the full depth of, in which case I don't know what that is. But if I type in Z equals, that'll bring that up as a cut depth of one, which is the material thickness. Our tool will not be the half inch ball nose, but we will select the quarter inch end mill to do this. So I'm going to select that now come down to the machine vectors okay so as stated we need to machine on the outside so we're machining on the outside uh, but by the nature of this nested routine we will actually get the machining on the inside of the inner vectors okay so once again the software takes care of that rather than possibly having to create two separate toolpaths one for the rectangle and then one for the trifolds and quadrifolds so we're now going to move down and we're not going to be adding tabs in this case we'll assume in this case it's actually um, either stuck down or be using a vacuum table uh, but what I do need to do is to add some leads. So with this, I'm going to select the add leads. And now this can only be actioned by having the advanced toolpath option switched on. So I've switched that on now. We're going to go for a circular lead. The radius of that lead is going to be one inch. The actual arc, the amount that it arcs out will be half an inch. OK, and I'm actually going to do a lead out as well to make sure that we're sort of going past and the overcut distance itself is a quarter of an inch. OK, so we can see that from the view on the menu that we will actually be arcing in. OK, doing the full pass and then basically doing an overcut distance to come past before arcing out. OK, now in this way, this is going to be called um, the profile cutout. So I'll just call that cutout now. And we'll go ahead and calculate. So we can see that's drawn on the screen. Now it's, a war, uh, it's warned me through the message to avoid gouging. One or more leads had to be reduced in length or removed completely. Please check the toolpath is suitable for your requirements. So based upon that quite large radius and the quite large lead length, in some cases, given the nature of the quatrefoils and trifoils, it will have needed to um, reduce the length of that lead or in some cases possibly remove it altogether. So if we OK that now, let's take a look at the toolpath and we can see in some areas, um, for instance, if we go down to the bottom left hand corner, we can see that lead in and lead out. Now, in this case, it's right on the edge of my external profile um, and I may want to reposition that. Uh, so I can do that in a number of different ways. One, I can come in to do this manually, OK, in which case I could come into the profile and change the start and end point, OK. Or alternatively, I can use the menu for the toolpath and actually change the start positions. So if I actually pop that up now, I can come into the start at and currently we have keep current start points switched on but of course what we can do now is come down to the move start points to be closest to the selected point 
on a vector bounding box. So essentially, for the vectors that are selected, imagine a bounding box being put round them, and then you are selecting a position on that bounding box from where you'd like the tool to approach from. So I'm going to switch that on now, and in this case, I can, I'm actually going to just leave it on the top here in the center so we can see that and then calculate that and we can we get the same message again because we we're still continuing to violate certain certain areas if we don't change the leads I'm going to OK that and immediately you can see from the 2D view you can see that we have the uh, tool arcing in and out from that top edge and we can just zoom out now and we can see that exactly the same on that top edge um, in the 3D view and that's purely by changing that at the menu uh, so if you have a number of different profiles rather than having to change the start point for each of those separate profiles you can use that option in that form and it assumes there is like a bounding box around the vector and then you're picking a particular position on that bounding box from where you'd like the tool to approach and retract from okay so with that now I'm happy to proceed with the machining so I'm just going to come back to the full view and then we're just going to just play that out now and we can see that that has trimmed away the uh, center pieces so we've got a number of uh, items that are waste material as well as the perimeter and in order to remove that now I can just simply double click on that and I'm going to double click on the other items as well just to show the eventual workpiece so this is a way just to present the item um, in the eventual form it will be and we can see that now and we have our beautiful uh, finished quatrefoil panel on the screen so there's a number of steps that we do need to follow to finish this project one of course obviously is to write out the toolpass so we could come in now to our save toolpass and in this case there may be a number that we want to write out together we've got the pocket circles and the outer circles here and I can come into the save toolpath here and I'm going to output all visible toolpaths to one file. OK. In this case, I'm going to take both of those items, select the post process and save those out. If I had a, a tool change, of course, I could include all those. But in this case, I've just picked two toolpaths with the same tool to start. OK. Now, for this, for the means of this demonstration, I'm not going to write out any toolpaths. What I'm actually going to do is just close out of that there now and come into File and then Save As. And we're going to save this project. And we're going to save this as the gothic quatrefoil 2.5D toolpass.cf file. And I'll just overwrite that one and save it. And then I can always reopen this, open up the uh, toolpass, and then be able to output them as G code for the machine at a later stage.